guys, we are back in the cold room because it is still cold outside, but uh, today I want to cover another uh, survival kit. And this one, as you guys can probably already tell, is a bottle survival kit. Now this one's also a little bit special, bottle because it's a little bit interesting because it is a square bottle, as you guys can see, and it's by its name. Uh, but I thought it would be very interesting, especially for the fact that this bottle, unlike others, it not only does it open traditionally from the top, like that, but it also opens from the bottom, like this. And what I liked about this design was that the top, sneak peek of stuff in there, but uh, it's a little bit narrow, or more narrow, and would be pretty much impossible to get most survival gear into. But the bottom is actually pretty big, as you guys can see there. And uh, that makes it a lot easier to get stuff in here. So that's why I'm using this bottle for this Quick video. Look around the bottle so you guys can kind of see what's in there uh, but now without any further ado let's actually get into what's in that i have in here or rather the last thing i always put in this is generally something i put in a lot of kits and i usually choose it for last for a good reason and that is that generally paracord kind of deadens the sound if you guys can notice how it has a rattle to it that's what paracord's really good at doing is taking the rattle out of things so that's why you generally put it last but this is about 20 feet of paracord put into a butterfly bundle. This one's a little bit scrappy looking because I had to shove it in there. But that's about 20 feet uh, of paracord. The next thing is all my other survival headlamp. kits. This one follows the Dave Canterbury 10 C's of survivability as closely as I can get. Generally I can't incorporate all 10 C's into a bottle like this that's rather small. Uh, but I try and go incorporate as many as I can. Which, this is so the light, and I chose a headlamp in particular for a few reasons. Firstly, uh, most of my flashlights that I have are pretty long and big, and in a kit like this, it really does not make any sense to have them, yeah. especially when all wound up, you know, with this headband like that is an extremely small package and still very powerful for how small it is. So that's why I put a headlamp in there. Additionally, it's also nice to have a hands-free form of lighting, and so that's another reason why I chose that. So the second piece, I'm just kind of doing this as things fall out, is combustion. And this is a Light My Fire Army and Coconut Shell handle, and I really like this one. It is very large as far as the ferro rod goes. It's 12,000 strikes, and I actually really like these coconut shell handles. I would highly recommend, by the way, whenever you're ordering these off of Amazon particularly, try and get these coconut shell handled ones. They're really awesome. They look really great with leather, too. I know it's a little side rant, but if you're ever taking a ferro rod or incorporating a ferro rod with leather, these coconut shell handles look really good. So the next piece that fell out, too, is the Mora Eldress, and this is combustion, this is cutlery. This Mora Eldress is fastly becoming one of my absolute favorite knives for building, especially smaller survival kits. I find that it fits really well in most small-ish survival kits, but it also feels really great in the hand. You guys can see this thing, at least for me, you know, my pinky is not hanging off of here. I can get a full grip on this. It is a little tight, but I can get a full grip on this. The edge is great for a lot of general tasks. Not to mention, the spine is sharpened to a 90 degree. So that's why I don't have a striker, an independent striker for this ferro rod. This is a sharpened spine on the Mora Eldris. So it works really well for striking ferro rods. So the next piece, and these don't want to come out as easily, so I think I'll grab them out of the top. Band-Aids. You guys can see there. I just have a couple Band-Aids here. Band-Aids are great overall, just general purpose things for, you know, if you get a cut, scratch, whatever, you, know, you can just cover them up easily with Band-Aids. So I threw a couple in there because I still had some extra space in this kit. I just wanted to kind of fill it with something that's still useful, even though these are not a part of the five C's of survivability. Now, what you guys are all wondering, and probably already wrote in the comments by now, is how the heck am I going to take pond water and make it safe to drink in a plastic bottle? And I think I'm going to be doing another bottle survival kit. That's going to be a little bit different, but for this one, I already accounted for it, and I have iodine tablets here. So if I do need to drink pond water or any water from a non-clean source, I can use the iodine tablets so that I don't have to boil 
with this because obviously you can boil with plastic bottles. It is a thing if you guys want to go look it up. You just have to make sure you have water in here. That's something that a lot of people don't know. But you can't actually boil with these. It will damage them and it will likely... Uh, likely leach, you know, carcinogens into the water. It's not a very safe idea and not something you should do normally, but you can do it in emergencies. However, like I said, iodine tablets, uh, part is idea. cargo tape. By the way, these two were not a part of Seas of Survivability, but then this one is, this is cargo tape or duct tape. Um, and overall, just a great thing to have. You know, I really like running cargo tape or duct tape with paracord. I think they make a fantastic pair, especially because both of those two materials, as far as cordage goes, are extremely versatile. You can pretty much do anything you want with them. So then lastly is cover. And this in here is the Mylar blanket. And I'm going to try and get it out. This bottle particularly, it's a little bit tricky to uh, actually, it's easy to put a Mylar blanket in here, but it's a little bit harder to get the blanket out. So what I did was I took it out of its normal packaging and I put it in there, and then it's kind of uses this deployment method. Uh, and it's really hard to show on tape without like whacking the camera, but I will pull it out and show you guys what I'm talking about more. You there, I'm clearing out both sides, but essentially you just pull it to pieces and then you can pull it out of either way because this opens up like i said on both sides and there is the kind of mylar blanket or not kind of but there is the mylar blanket so it's a little bit of an interesting way to deploy the mylar blanket but you can see that it is still definitely doable and that is most of the kit but not least not even sure how i forgot this because it's so big but uh is is a bow i somehow incorporated this bow this entire bow you guys can see just entirely into this bottle kit. You know, it's crazy to think that you can actually do it. But I just want to do something kind of funny for the whole fact that this opens on both sides. Ironically, you can kind of keep larger things in there uh, because this opens up on both sides, but obviously not that big. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this nice little you know, of showing. this and you know how I was able to put all this stuff. This is actually quite a lot of stuff considering this is only a 24 ounce bottle. I was really impressed to see just how much I could actually fit in a 24 ounce square bottle. So that's pretty much all the kit. I did cover seven of the 10 C's of survivability, leaving out some of the more uh, optional things. I would say nothing's really particularly optional in a 10 C's of survivability. All of it would be great, but keeping a lot of the absolute most important things. Obviously, I wasn't able to incorporate things like a compass, but that just really would not fit in here, or at least one that would be really good would not be able to fit in here. So I did not uh, incorporate something like that. But I uh, look at this kit, and don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and tell me what your kits are. Do you guys do any uh, bottle survival kits? What are you guys able to incorporate? Once again, I will be doing another bottle survival kit with a little bit different bottle and a little bit different setup to show you guys more of a stainless steel option. I have that bottle yet, so when I get it, I'll be doing another video <laughs> similar. But anyways, guys, that's it for now, and I'm out.